Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Ace Attorney Investigations. Miles Edgeworth. No! Alright. Alright, good. <laughs> I almost thought I... I ruined the whole playthrough. <laughs> okay, uh, we're in... What's the middle part one? Oh yeah, okay. <clears throat> um, we got Larry, we got Wendy, old bag, we got, uh... A whole bunch of characters coming back. Like, a uh, Bayard, Detective Bayard, and, a uh, Schlung Wolf. So... It's been a couple of days, but... That's, uh, what pretty much happened, so... Now we're gonna, uh, talk to, uh, Wendy here. Pink Princess. <clears throat> Now then, <clears throat> what are you doing here? I thought you were working at Gatewater Land as the Pink Badger. Oh, what are you talking about? Oh, that was ages ago. Okay, that's <laughs> that was terrible. That was yesterday. Look, I worked at Global Studios before a long time ago, right? Well, they called me up this morning, kind of out of the blue, actually. Has it called you? Apparently, the girl who plays the Pink Princess collapsed from a bad cold. It happened so suddenly, so they called me in uh, to be her last-minute replacement. Do they not have enough people on staff at that studio? I really couldn't say no, so here I am, playing the role of the heroine. <coughs> Instead of that mindy girl, I mean. Ah, uh, but the poor girl, I feel so bad for her. Because they let me stand in for her, she's going to have a terrible time. I mean, I'm not exactly ready to be standing there for my second trip. Uh, through a rock down shuriken, hit the steel set, and it's an uproid, uh, because they tell you they're really a bunch of simpletons. Okay, I got that. I got all of that. You're a rather lively old lady. So, basically, you received the stand-in request this morning, correct? You got it. If you need to see it, I got it right here. Look. You know, <clears throat> it appears that she is telling the truth. Stand and request. Uh, I tell you, my fine acting moved the entire audience to tears. I want to see the stand and request. Uh, request for Miss Oldback to stand in for Mindy, the pink princess actress who fell in. Okay. Evidence. Yes, tears of laughter, as I recall. But being famous has its problems too, you know. Here, take a look at this. It's a letter from a stalker. <laughs> uh, when y'all be descending on you from above tonight, your loving night. <laughs> Damn, we got bars. I was just taking my break when I found this stuck under the door to my room. Honestly, you really have to watch out for these kinds of things. Look what it says. Wendy, I'll... Wendy, I'll be descending on you from above tonight, your loving night. <laughs> that was kind of weird. Hmm, how absolutely revolting. I mean, you think you could get my name right. There's no accent in my name. Wait, <clears throat> this horrible handwriting. Where have I seen this before? Wait, let me see. I can't see it. Oh wait, is it? Is it Larry? I need to see that, uh, letter again. Ah, but now that you're here, Ajipu, I feel 100% safe. Uh, uh, I, w where do I factor into this? You'd bust that evil stalker man for my sake, wouldn't you, Ajipu? Well, if you allow me the liberty to handle this in my own way, I'd gladly dispatch a detective to your house later. Oh, come on, Ejipu, stop being so dismissive and playing hard to get. 
letter from Stalker. Let me take a look at this. For Miss Elbag has mistakes. Uh, for Miss Elbag has mistakes from bad penmanship. Letter from Stalker. Okay. Let me see. The E has the uh, accent on it. Uh, sorry. <laughs> um, from above tonight. Yeah, they only do accents on the E. Well, except for the E in the sending, apparently. Oh wait, no, there it is, at the end. The sending. Wait, no, that's not. E. Never mind. So yeah, that's E. The sending. B. Okay, B doesn't have the accent. The night has an E on it though. Night. Wait, no. That's just how you spell it. Damn, these fucking cursive. Uh, loving Wendy. Is it? Descending. Okay, yeah, the, the E at the beginning of descending doesn't have it. Okay, the accent is, looks like an I, actually. So looks like they're. Okay, but B doesn't have. B is, B is just an E. What the fuck? <laughs> Alright, let me look at Larry again. Uh, to Mr. Edgeworth, Steel Samurai. There's the same eye again. Wit. Married. Okay. Are they? Hold on. Um. Yeah, this looks like Larry's. Okay. Alright, uh, time of the murder. What were you doing at the time of the crime? What crime? What? After the show was over, I had nothing but free time on my hands. So I used the fireplace in the room next door to keep my bad hip warm. Used the fireplace. At the time of the crime, Miss Olbag was warning, warming her hip in the room next door. Logic. Well, a murder occurred in the room right next to yours. Oh, is that right? Oh, Edgepoo, I'm so scared. Hold me. Caress me. Whoa, whoa, whoa. If, if you ple could please... If you could please not cling on to my personage. In any case, I take it then that you failed to show up as the Ambassador Alba's speech. Oh, that? No, I didn't go to. I mean, I may have the heart of a young, tender maiden, but my body just refuses to cooperate at times. <clears throat> as soon as the show ended, my hips started acting up and got stiff. I couldn't move at all. Can you provide proof of your condition? Oh, just go on ahead and ask the doctors in the infirmary. They're the ones who carried me from the theater all the way to Nizamasi. <clears throat> I'll have to admit, the thought of her not being able to leave that room is a rather pleasant. Dog? <clears throat> uh, Prosecutor Von Karma, I brought the police dog as you requested, sir. Good to work. You may leave now, officer. Bork. Hmm, this dog... I requested the assistance of uh, of a dog in our search for the Yatta. Bark. Looks like you guys have some pretty bright dogs in this country too. <laughs> it's the same fucking sprite. <laughs> Is this the same dog? Hey, you're a real cutie, aren't you? Yeah, that's a good boy. That's the police dog. <laughs> I hate these two so much because I can't because I can't voice act <laughs> I am a professional VA by the way I'm not okay that's the police dog gum she's been taking care of I think its name is uh, Missile so yeah it's the same dog okay What's a fitting name for a police dog that dashes out in front and attacks? 
That action alone isn't exactly what's going to solve the case for us, you know. Now, Missile, I want you to go find some clues. Go. Morph. Oh, wow. Awesome. <laughs> okay. Good dog. You really are quite bright, aren't you? Unlike a certain someone I know. Now, what do we have here? What is this? It looks like a small hot dog, but... Hmm. Wait. Francisca. Isn't that a, an official samurai dog? Grrr. Ah, no. Bad missile. He ate it. I wonder if it's alright for him to eat that. It's just a meat substance sack featuring the steel samurai. I'm sure it'll be fine. That's quite a bit of information you gathered here in a single glance. We, sh uh, we should really be focusing on why there was a samurai dog there in the first place. Hmm, it looks like that snack wasn't all missile found. Oh, and what do we have here? It appears to be a lady's undershirt. I wonder if Ambassador Alba might have an interest in cross-dressing. I somehow doubt that. It doesn't look like the shirt would even fit him. Alright, we don't- okay, you don't- you don't have to judge. <laughs> a samurai dog in a lady's undershirt. What are these two items doing in a room like this? Given the circumstances, a lady's undershirt could only belong to one person. I suppose I should get this over with and ask the owner of said undershirt about it. Ladies on a shirt. Look at this. Uh, found in the office fireplace. There's only one person here who would have who would own such a shirt. I'll ask our uh, Francisca. <laughs> Missile. So I can talk about that first. We've borrowed this dog from the local precinct, but is he really capable of handling this case? I thought the police are usually a, uh, are usually of a much larger breed. He may be small, but he is an excellent police dog. Furthermore, he was raised by Detective Gumshoe. You had me thinking this dog was capable until you said that he was erased by Scurafi. Yes, well, I suppose that wasn't the best of arguments to use. Let's present uh, the thing. The standard request. Excuse me. I want to take a sip. Mm hmm. You know, I thought she would have something to say about that. Uh, I don't think it began to be used. Yes, I can't. Okay. Let me talk to Missile. Yes, I can talk to the dog. Wolf. He was a much bigger help than I thought he would be. Yes, however, there are a few aspects I don't understand about what he found. In that case, you should keep on investigating until you do understand. Now, my subordinate, continue with the investigation. Uh, Alright, I will. It is with great dread that I proceed to do what I must to solve the case. Okay, let me ask Larry about the letter, though. Larry! Um... Let me ask about this. Okay, another clue? Okay. Awesome. Okay. Um... Okay. Um, is there anything else? There was uh, the shirt. Alright, uh, okay, I get it. I get it. I go talk to old back then. <clears throat> Tell me about the standard request. <laughs> Ah, what a strange twist of events. Because they needed a stand-in, I was able to become a hero and just like that. 
I assume that the actual reason you were cold and is due to a lack of personnel. Well, there's that too. But no matter what you say, it's obvious that I have a presence. I bet that's how I caught the eye of the director. I ask you, is being beautiful really such a crime? I suspect even the director is lament yeah. lamenting the lack of personnel from the depths of his heart. The letter from Stalker. Ah, so this person will be descending on me from above tonight, huh? Oh, Ejipu, I'm so scared. Hold me. If if you could please not cling onto my personage. Honestly, beautiful people have it so hard. All it took was for me to be up on the stage for a little while and a stalker is born. Like, actually, the whole... <clears throat> actually, the whole time while you were up on that stage, you were in costume. Therefore, no one should recognize you or what you look from underneath. But there is that thing, you know, they say people can identify you by your aura. So even without seeing my face, my stalker could see the beauty within. So you see, that's how I charm the pants off of men. Charm? You? Preposterous. Okay. If you could, <clears throat> if you could please take a look at this brown colored undershirt. I, that's not really brown. More like a, a very light orange. Like an orange peach? A peach orange? Peach orange color? Oh, edgy poo. What is the meaning of this? Why did you steal that thing from my bags? All you had to do was ask, and I would have gladly given you as many as you like. Ugh, uh, thanks, but no thanks. This shirt was found here at the crime scene. What? Come now, why don't you just confess and explain what's doing here? I know nothing. Nothing. I tell you. What? <laughs> oh, I admit that I used the fireplace to dry that shirt. But I can't really help the fact that I had to, you know. Wearing the pink princess costume was like being in a sauna. And on top of that, I get figured. I get fingered as a suspect. You're too cruel, Ejibu. Are you claiming that you never once set foot inside this room? Of course I am. If I had the one to find the body, and you think I'd be as calm as a relaxed as I am. <clears throat> Our tablets and article the cat uh, always oh, they're missing. Speaking of missing, there's a matter of my husband. Can you believe when we got married? He said, I guess I'm stuck marrying you. Purpose of that. What is you should have done? You deserve you, but I can't help it. Will you marry me? Honestly, men these days. <sighs> I got that. Um, well. I don't believe she is lying about her actions. So I can safely assume she really was drying her shirt by the fireplace on her break. And somehow the undershirt managed to move from this next room to Yeah. From the next room to this one? Yeah, I'm sure it was found in the office fireplace, but how did it get there? I assume the samurai dong was also yours. <coughs> Excuse me? Ah, that brilliant mind of yours. You really can see through everything about me. And so the feeling of dread continues. But I suppose I should ask for more details. Samurai dogs. That samurai dog was yours, wasn't it? Of oh, of course. I'm forever yours, my edgy wedgie poo. If, if you could just stick to what I've asked you. Oh, edgy. Are you in this old bag? No. Sorry if that was loud. You really don't change, do you? When will you learn how to take a joke? Anyway, that samurai dog wasn't mine. Those things are a present from the studio to the embassy. Yeah, present. Yeah, the studio bigwig. Yeah, oh my gosh, this voice. The studio bigwigs basically told us to play delivery boys. We were just supposed to hand the dogs off to the embassy members and tell them hi. I had to pile them all into the push cart just to move them all. Those studio guys uh, should have delivered those things by themselves, right, Edgy? So, did you deliver the samurai dogs to the embassy staff as per your instruction? <gasps> hey, Edgy, don't just ignore me and end my question. Aren't you going to stick up for me? Ah, about that. See, after the show, I went to rest a bleh, to rest a spell in the dressing room because of my bad hip, you know. And there they were. The samurai dogs were just sitting on the dressing room floor. Oh, oh okay. 
Oh, okay, the box. I guess that's fine enough. I suppose you had to make preparations for disturbing them after the show. Well, if by preparation you mean sampling them as well. Excuse me? Oh, I tried one and thought they were actually quite good. Sorry, but I just had to find out. I know it was silly of me to think this, but I figured that since they're for a kids show, their taste was probably for kids too. But they were so good that I couldn't stop. Before I went back to my room, I just had to help myself to half a dozen or so boxes. As I sat there by the roaring fire, warming them and eating them, I thought, ah, this is it. And what is it now? Oh, I know, I bet you want a box too, don't you, my itchy poo? Well, who am I to say no to you, but I'll only give you this one. The rest are all for me. Samurai dogs? Worst on to me? Is that what that said? It looks like the lesson for today is that when the steel samurai and the, the pink princess... Uh, let me look at the, the box. Samurai dogs. Um, present for embassy staff. Miss Oldbag took it. <sighs> Excuse me. Uh, Miss Oldbag took and ate a few of them uh, from the dressing room. I don't know why I keep adding words in. Just feels more natural, I guess. <clears throat> Alright. Take off their mask and they transform into a pair of annoying troublemakers. Okay, let's present them hot dogs. <clears throat> ah, this thing really showed me not to underestimate the taste of a snack meant for kids. Was it really that tasty? <gasps> Don't tell me you haven't had one yet. In that case, oh, yeah. <laughs> in, in that case, I'll just have to feed you one. Now open wide. Here comes the hot dog tray. <laughs> That's a crazy thing to say. <laughs> I'm gonna start using that now. Uh, let me write it down. <laughs> uh, damn it, wait. Alright, uh. Open wide, here <laughs> comes the hot dog tray. <laughs> Oh, I thought we got to use that for later. God, I love this game. Uh, no, that's perfectly alright. I'm currently on the job right now. Okay. So, what now? Larry! The hot dogs. Alright. I guess I, I guess I should uh, piece logic together now, I guess. I'm gonna take a sip. <laughs> I think that's everything. Francisco, would you like a hot dog? Okay. Let me, let me look. Smoke from the chimney. Use the fireplace. On your shirt from the next door. I mean, I don't think I need to save. I think I just do this. But I'm so scared <laughs> of being wrong. But I'm going to risk it, though. Smoke from the chimney. Use the fireplace. I mean, this got to be it. Okay. There is no trace of this room's fireplace being used. And your point is... <clears throat> Smoke was supposedly pouring out of the chimney connected to this fireplace. At least, according to Larry. This is a contradiction of facts, is it not? Are you sure he wasn't just disoriented or something up... <clears throat> or something up on that roof? There's a testimony from an investigator that puts Larry at this particular chimney. So no, I don't think it was a mistaken impression on Larry's part. On the other hand, the fireplace in the next room was being used at the time. Where do you suppose the smoke from that fireplace went? Ah, I see. So that 
So what you are proposing is this. The smoke that came out of the chimney was actually from this old bag's fire. So basically the fire... Uh, <coughs> the, uh, damn. The fireplaces are of neighboring rooms. Share one chimney. Is that what you're implying? Shared chimney. The office fireplace and the one in Miss Olbach's room share the same chimney. Logic. Precisely. Oh, excuse me. The undershirt was found in the office fireplace. How did it get in there? Okay, this one I'm actually going to save on. Because <laughs> I could be wrong on this. So, uh... Good. Uh huh. Under here, uh, shadow chimney. Uh huh. <clears throat> the lady's undershirt that Miss Elf found. Oh. Why are you getting? Why are you getting all excited over holding it to that? Oh, Damn it! Over holding onto a lady's undergarment. Miles Edgeworth, you own Koth Sea Slug. If you know the owner of said undershirt, then hurry up and return it to her already. You have it all wrong. This is evidence. And the owner of this piece of evidence was in the room next door. And yet, despite that, Miss Elle found it in the fireplace of this room. This lady's undershirt. Are you seriously claiming that it somehow passed through a solid brick wall? Not quite. The fireplace in this room is connected to a chimney. The other fireplace in the other room is also connected to the same chimney. Leading us to the possibility that the two fireplaces are connected to each other. Perhaps a closer look is the back of the f uh, the, the back of the fireplace is in order. There's an X on the back of the fireplace. Let's see if I can get a better look at this. It, it opens. What's in the... The wall separating this room's fireplace from the next room's fireplace. Apparently it turns? As I suspected, this fireplace does indeed connect this room to the neighboring room. The neighboring room? There appears to be nothing particular about the next room. But the fact that there is nothing special about the next room isn't what is important. It's the fact that there is a secret passage passageway through this room's fireplace. Uh, connected fireplaces. Ambassador's Alba's office fireplace is connected to the neighboring room's fireplace. Alright. We now know that the fireplace connects those two rooms together. But how exactly is that significant? You aren't going to suddenly name the old lady as the mass 2 killer now, are you? No, she couldn't move at all because of her stiff hip. She could not have been this one. The one. Unfortunately, I believe... That this fireplace has nothing whatsoever to do with the Mass 2's murder. I'm actually complete. Hell yeah. It would appear that the answer has made itself known. You're making quite a confident face there, Mr. Prosecutor. Bring it on. I'm ready to counter any argument you may have. Very well then, if you are prepared. I'll show you exactly where my deductions have led me. Good. I'm counting on you, Edgy. Leave it to me, Larry. My first attack will be to expose your lie for what it really is. My lie! I know that there is still something you're keeping from the rest of us. Uh, what's wrong with you? Why is it? Why is it that you won't believe me no matter what I say, Edgy? Curse you! I should just hurry up and die already, if that's how it's gonna be! I'll confess to every murder in the whole world, and then kill myself- <laughs> Oh my gosh. And throw everything into mass confusion! Am I doing this voice right? I feel like- I feel like I'm not. Oh. And throw everything- Okay, no. And throw everything to mass confusion. Damn it. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> You made some wonderful friends as a child, I see. Larry, I only have one thing to say to you. <clears throat> Even if you make that face at me, it's no use. A man who's ready to die is strong-willed, you know. Larry, it doesn't matter what sort of ha hair-brain trouble you have caused. I only ask that you do not lie to me. 
If you cause an innocent person to be judged unfairly because of some insipid lie, I will never forgive you. Edgy. Although, allow me to say that I consider you to be among the innocents in this case, and that I will draw the real killer out. You can trust me on this. All right, I... This time, I... This time, I'll tell you the whole truth, okay? What happens... What happened? What didn't happen? The works. Just what happened will do. Now then, if you will please testify as to what you did up on the roof tonight. Excuse me. Up on the rooftop. Okay. After the show, I left the push cart in the Rose Garden and came into the embassy. Then they took a picture of me shaking hands with the ambassador. Alright, hold on. I'm... Damn, this is bothering me. Hold on. Good. Okay. I can't tell from the... From the audio, qual the audio quality. <laughs> the audio quality doesn't really help me. Anyway. Alright. <clears throat> then they took a picture of me shaking hands with the ambassador. After that, and until my next appearance, I had some free time, so I wandered around. <laughs> That's when I spotted the chimney. A chimney like that is a rare thing, you know. So then I wanted to play Santa and decided to give it a try. <sighs> Excuse me. Larry, I thought I just finished telling you not to lie anymore. Um, but it's, uh, kind of, uh, ultra embarrassing. And what is exactly, what exactly is so ultra embarrassing that you can't tell me? Edgy man, I just said it was embarrassing, so of course I can't just blurt it out. So you're just gonna have to reason it out of me. As your superior, I command you to hurry up and expose this man's lie. I have every intention to, for I'm not about to let us waste time on such a trifling matter. Rebuttal. I'm gonna take a sip. You left the push cart? Could you please clarify that statement for me? Yeah, so the wheels on the push cart got covered in dirt from the rose garden. <laughs> it would have made a mess of the floor inside, so Ambassador Alba said to just leave it. Well, it would be rather imp impolite to dirty another country's embassy. Come to think of it, I recall seeing the pink princess on my way into the embassy. And what was she doing? Nothing particular, because she was being carried by some donks on a stretcher. She must have been incapacitated by the pain of her bad hip that she s suffered during the show. So I came into the embassy, right? And then... Uh, then they took a picture of me shaking her head. Right here, right here! Excuse me. So you shook hands with the ambassador of the Kingdom of Alibas, did you? <laughs> yeah, can you believe it? I did something really cool for a change. But honestly speaking, there's nothing interesting about the shaking some guy's hand. Hey there, are you disrespecting another country in their very own embassy? As someone with roots in this country, I'm feeling nothing but incredible shame as a second. Agreed. I apologize for his inconsiderate words. Now, Larry, please continue. What? what is up with all of you? You keep saying that kind of thing and I'll, I'll tell you only lies. You're already telling us nothing but lies, so let it go and move on. All right, already. You don't need to glare at me like that, Edgy. Okay. After that, and until my next appearance, I had some free time, so I wandered around. <clears throat> Larry, I want you to listen very carefully and take this to heart. The whole point of your life is to cause misery and pain to everyone you encounter. <laughs> I know! I get it. I'm totally the bad guy. Again. Sorry. I thought you were his friend. Don't you think that was a bit harsh? Long as he says. <laughs> I just love that this guy just suddenly breaks out quotes during his conversation. Long as he says, true friends are bosom friends. If you're in trouble, call on your bosom friend whose shoulder you can truly cry on. Hey, bosom buddy. 
Hey, boo somebody. I hope you're listening carefully to my testimony. Has it crossed your pea-sized brain yet that Agent Ling, sorry, Agent Schlong, is only out to arrest you, Larry? Now then, you were wandering around inside the embassy, and then what happened? That's when I saw the chimney. A chimney like that is a rare thing, you know. I should hardly think that chimneys are that rare. Agreed. Especially since they are a traditional feature of American houses. Plus, many grand buildings have even larger and fancier chimneys. Alright, yeah, but, uh... <clears throat> yeah, but the, the kind of chimney I'm talking about is really romantic type. A romantic chimney? It might sound kind of silly, but, uh... But women seem to really enjoy them. And I just had a good feeling about that chimney. So then, wanted to play Santa and decided to give it a try. You suddenly wanted to play Santa? Oh, well, actually, I dressed up as Santa once before already. That was down at Gord Lake. Ugh. I appreciate if you wouldn't dredge up such an unnecessary memories for me. Heh. <laughs> Sounds like you guys share a lot of history. A perk to be in childhood friends, huh? Besides, it's not a felony to dress up and play Santa, you know. Santa doesn't go around killing people after he comes down a family's chimney after all. Holy shit, if that was true, that would be fucking scary. Actually, is, is it worth delving into whether or not playing Santa is a big deal? Uh, I don't know. Maybe? Cut. Uh, okay, I'm gonna raise an objection. Actually, I believe in the... Hold on. Sorry, my A, my a button. Hold on. It's a bit dirty. Sorry, hold on. Ignore this. Sorry. Okay. Damn it. I, should, I read this, please. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> actually, I believe in the case of this man, playing Sans is actually quite a big deal. Are you saying that your buddy isn't exactly made of Santa quality stuff? Precisely. You hit the nail on the head again, Agent Schlong. Hey, Edgy! That's so incredibly mean! Tell me something, Larry. Did you know that Santa's job is to deliver presents to people all over the world? Excuse me. Of course I know that. I did graduate from junior high, you know. You know what? I just realized now, um... I did not get to read the other lines. Shit. Damn it. Okay, hold on. <laughs> oh, that was weird. Anyway, let me not raise an objection. <laughs> so I guess you don't have a problem with my statement? Perhaps. I need to gather more information first. As I suspected... Oh, hold on. Okay, that was weird. Anyway. <laughs> As I suspected, you, have, you do have something to hide, Larry. But what could be so embarrassing that you'd be willing to go to jail for it? This man's mind is a complete mystery to me. I believe it's a secret to have... Uh, uh, I believe it's a secret to everyone of a normal mindset how Larry Minds works. However, taking into account his usual woman-obsessed way of thinking... Oops. I believe that his lie this time is also related to a woman, and this is what I intend to prove. Okay. That was the end of the sentence, really. Damn it! Alright, let me just cut to where I left off then. Cut! Okay. <laughs> uh, okay, apparently I didn't know that was the last sentence, so... Man, whatever. Tell me something, Larry. Did you know that Santa's job is deliver- Okay. Yeah, I did. I, uh... I, uh... Showed up a little, little too early. Okay. <clears throat> And that is, you're trying to tell me something. Uh, I want you to tell me to whom you were delivering a present to. Um, I was, uh, delivering a present to a child, not basking in the glow of love? That must be the most elegant description of you, of you I've ever heard. But a lie is still a lie. You, you sure know how to kick a guy while he, when he's down, you know that? Damn it. In any case, the person you wish to deliver that present onto was most certainly this.
It's probably a Wendy, right? I think so. Executing lady. Heh. <laughs> Interesting taste you have there, Mr. Suspect. Don't. Don't. <laughs> Damn it, hold on. <clears throat> don't spread lies about me. I totally didn't want to see Miss Olbeck so much that I tried to go down the chimney. Ow! I advise you to stop right there on your bashing of a lady. Well, I must admit that I myself hardly ever have the want. Hardly ever have the want to run into that lady. Okay. However, what if you were misinformed and under the wrong impression? Then what? Define wrong impression. I simply mean that the man before you thought to enter the old lady's room without knowing one very important fact. And that fact is best summed up with this. Uh, what? This is the only shirt. Shit! Damn it! <laughs> Larry, I'd like for you to take a look at this piece of evidence. No way! But it's not really all that important, is it? It's always it's always like this. You acting so high and mighty and then you bully me. That's why I refuse to look at it. Be quiet and just take a look. Well if you say so, Francie. <clears throat> But only because you say so. Some people never change, even if their attitudes do change at the woman woman. So what's up with that anyway? <laughs> Why, it's proof that you never even knew existed, of course. Oh, is that all? Well, I don't need it right now, so I'll just give it back to you. What? <laughs> I got I got you on the ropes now, don't I? Was that piece of evidence unrelated to the question at hand? I need to think through this one more time. Larry didn't know one very important fact when he tried to sneak into the old bat's room. And that fact is best summed up with this. Okay. Oh, the fucking standard request. Okay. Ahem. <laughs> <clears throat> This is something the old lady received from her employer for the night. The girl who normally plays the pink princess, Mindy, was it again? It seemed that this man is quite taken with that actress. But that's not true, Edgy. She's the one with the hots for me. I just know it. I can feel her sexy beam piercing my heart when she's watching me. Sexy beam, I tell you. You filthy, despicable, inconsiderate, fickle, idiotic, cowardly, <laughs> excuse me, apparition of a man. You haven't matured at all since we last met. Hey, Mr. Prosecutor. Yes? This guy, he's got bigger problems than just getting involved in murders, I take it. I suppose you could put it that way. Hey, what the heck, man? I don't get you guys at all. Why do you all have to make me out of some sort of bad guy? <clears throat> to return to the original topic, I propose that at least this much has been made clear. Without any knowledge, uh, without any knowledge that Miss Mindy has fallen ill, Larry tried to make his way into the Pink Princess's room. That much we know for sure. The Atrum Neutralis. Hey, Edgy. Looks like I got the hang of this court thing now. Or we're not in court at the moment. Shut up! I see what's going on here, and it <laughs> and it looks like just it looks just like what you do in court. I guess old boy here still has something he likes to say. Long as he says, until the root of the tongue dries, one never knows the whole truth. You shouldn't form conclusions until everything is out in the open, which is why I will listen. All right, then get ready to listen to me defeat Edgy in the battle of wits. <laughs> Battle of Wits. Boom! Boom! Sorry. A little Spongebob reference there. Larry, have you forgotten that I should lose your victory prize? Will... Larry, have you forgotten that should I lose, your victory prize will be your arrest? 
Various assertion. So you think that all I wanted to do was to go visit Mindy? Well, I dressed up as a Santa and climbed up to the chimney, but the smoke was really thick. It was a case of mistaken identity, and that mistake made me late for the speech. Then, to top it all off, top it all off, I became a suspect in a murder. That's what you really meant? But what would I ever put myself through such humiliation on purpose? I'm gonna take a sip. <clears throat> Excuse me. Hey, someone say something. Larry, are you seriously trying to submit this not as a confession but as testimony? So what if I am? Is there something wrong with that? My claim is a claim claiming my claim. Do you have a problem with that? Ah, uh, so it was you. You're my stalker. But I should warn you, it doesn't matter what kind of flattery you throw at me. I'm the devoted type of woman who's wholly focused on long as Ejipu's alive, I can't just drop him on my favorite No, I can't. Although, either I was attempting to just turn my love for Ejipu and I'll pass flying colors and I will say the complete truth to my lover. Oh, I'm so inspired. <laughs> Alright. You're such an inconsiderate, cowardly, idiotic, and all around completely worthless man. I thought I heard something ominous just now, but perhaps it was just my imagination. I believe there is nothing further for me to prove at this point. <laughs> what do you mean? Of course you still have got something to prove. You still have to show me some proof that I was trying to meet up with Mi Mindy. Proof, you say? Remember, Edgy, everything is evidence in court, right? You mean evidence is everything in court, <laughs> Larry. But I understand your point. Yeah, see? I'm totally pro at this now. Very well, if you wish to see the evidence, then let me show you the last piece of evidence you'll ever wish to see. There's a little Samurai Jack reference right there. Larry's assertion. Uh, so you think that all I wanted to do was go visit Mindy? Well, I have been saying that for a while now. After all, if not for that, then for what other reason did you wish to go down that chimney? You can't say that without any evidence. That's against the rules, Edgy. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for keeping the prosecutor in line for me, Mr. Suspect. Hmm. I have the evidence, and if you wish to see it that badly, I can introduce you to. Ah, uh, but it's not good to keep some weighty in my subordinates. Hurry up and show them already. L lies! Oh, lies, Edgy! Well, if you wish to lie, then by all means, continue. Because I'm ready to expose your lie at a moment's notice. Ugh, you won't get the better of me. Now let's see. Well, I dressed up as Santa and climbed up the chimney, but the smoke was really thick. Was the smoke coming from that chimney really that thick? You bet. It was so thick I had tears pouring out of my eyes. It was a mess. <clears throat> Hmm, I see. You do realize that you just confirmed for us your chimney escapade? Escapade? Uh -uh. What? That's totally unfair. You tricked me, Edgy! Hardly. You simply have yet to master how to counter this cross examination technique. <gasps> oh, I forgot to take a breath. Well, what I just said was a slip of the. No, I mean, I said the whole th wrong thing. Besides, isn't this what you really meant to say about what I did tonight? It was a kid's mistaken identity, and that mistake made me late for the speech. I'm not quite sure how you can mistake that actress for this lady. Oh, Edgy Poo, are you staring at me? Oh, are you finally succumbing to my feminine charms? I should think that the Steel Samurai is the one who should know all about your charms. What? Me? Edgy, what are you trying to do to me? Nothing. Simply that the Steel Samurai and the Pink Princess are husband and wife. Ah, oh, is my poor little Edgy Poo jealous? Ah, if you could please drop that line of discussion right this instant. But Edgy, I, I told you, I already have Mindy. Speaking of Mindy, exactly what kind of woman would she say she is? Edgy, are you seriously telling me you don't know who the Mindy is? She's just like 
What's her name means. She's super sweet with a great smile. I don't mean to brag, but she's one of those tropes fastest rising superstars. Interesting. Ha! So you're saying a woman like that is what made you late to the speech? Huh? Well, curse you too! Why is everyone out to make a suspect out of me? Look, all I can say is this. I was late to the speech. <laughs> then to top it off, became a suspect in a murder. That's what you really meant. I suppose you might be correct in a small way. Uh, what do you mean by that? Besides, <laughs> besides being a suspect in the murder, there are a few other things you are a suspect of. Oh, not you too, Francie. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you tried to stalk me, but I won't let you intimidate me like that. Look, I already told you, Miss Oldbag, I wasn't after you. I was trying to see Mindy. Hey, Mr. Prosecutor, can I just arrest this guy already? I completely understand how you feel, Agent Schlong. Wait, please listen to what I have to say. If you have a serious assertion to make, then I consider listen listening. However, no problem. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna put all I got into this. So listen good, okay? But why would I ever put myself through so much humiliation on purpose? All right, that's the last statement. Larry, this is the final point you wish to make. You got it. I've called on all the energy I have and told it to you with all of my soul. In that case, allow me to take that soul and break it. Ah. <laughs> Yes, we'll stamp it under our feet until it's been ground to a fine powder. A fine powder? Stab. Egg. If you really put all your soul into that, then you're ready for what's coming, right? Uh, in, in place of the Honorable Larry, I offer my soul to you. Larry, come out of- <laughs> come out from behind there and face this like a man. You're scary, my liege. This whole testimony is one giant confession of all that he's done tonight. He's practically begging me to show why he bothered to put himself through all of this. Okay. Um. Let's save. <laughs> Good. Okay, um, let's see. So the last thing we need to do is the last sentence, right? But why do I ever put myself through such humiliation on purpose? I think it's a shirt, right? Shit! This piece of evidence shows the fatal flaw in your testimony. Um, I don't really get it. So yeah, can I continue with what I was saying? Sure. I guess I was wrong. Why would I put myself through such humiliation purpose? That's the top of all, became a suspect of the murder. That's really what you meant. It was a kid's mistaken idea, and that's mistake made me late for the speech. Well, I just was sort of the sand and climb the chimney, but the smoke was really thick. Was the smoke thick? Mm, it kind of was. Yeah, I guess so. Do you think that I wanted, all I wanted to do was to go visit Mindy? What? Well, oops. Okay, uh, well, I've been saying that for a while now. After all, it's not for you that- it's not for that, then for what other reason do you wish to go down the chimney? Can't say that without any evidence, let's get through. Uh-huh. Oh, if you wish to land in moments, because I'm ready to expose your line and moments noticed. Okay. Well, I guess it was Santa and climbed up to the chimney, but the smoke was really thick. It was the kid's mistaken identity, and for that mistake... Okay. I'm not quite sure how you could mistake that actress for the lady. Uh-huh. Okay, okay, okay. What? I mean, what are you trying to do with me? 
I think it's going to be uh, cute. Oh, hold on. Okay. <clears throat> Tropes, interesting. Hold it. <laughs> okay. Okay, definitely this, but. I think I have to present the letter. Objection! Yeah, okay. <laughs> you dumb bitch. Larry, don't even think about denying that you have knowledge of this letter. <clears throat> hey, what's what are you showing that thing to me? Wendy, I'll be descending on you from above tonight, your loving night. Well, isn't that just romantic? But you weren't able to descend on her from above, were you, Mr. Loving Knight? <laughs> Sorry, that's just like... <laughs> it's like another crazy thing to say. <laughs> I'll descend upon you from... Wait, fuck. What is, what is, what is, what is. I'll be descending on you from above tonight. <laughs> oh my gosh. Ugh. I have no idea what you're talking about. I don't remember a thing. Objection! You can pretend to be ignorant all you like, but it's written right here. This letter proves that you were not out to meet the old lady, but rather that you were attending to pay Miss Mindy a visit. Shit. What part of this letter shows that the person Larry had intended to meet was Mindy? Yeah, hold on. Yeah, what this thing on my screen. Damn this fucking dirt. <laughs> okay. What part of this letter shows that the person Larry had intended to meet was Mindy? Probably night, right? That one just says a Wendy up there. Well, that's a weird way to sp spell an M, obviously. Probably this, right? Yeah. Larry, I suggest you take up penmanship lessons. That is, if you never wish to experience this level of embarrassment ever again. What? What the heck? What are you talking about? Speak English. <clears throat> you wrote Mindy so sloppily that it became Wendy to the average eye. Hey, stop picking on me. It's so embarrassing. They're there. Isn't that what childhood friends are for? They're the best, aren't they? For punching? But that will have to wait until we're off of this crime scene. Eek. Edgy, save me from the scary man. Sure, if you're willing to make amends, starting with your incredibly embarrassing mistake. Oh, excuse me. That, that, that was me. Come again. It's a fake. Someone out to get me. So they made that fake letter. To send me up. Accept your defeat graciously. Oh, that was Francisco. Okay. <clears throat> but you guys are being so mean. Penmanship analysis. What's that? No matter who, all people have certain unique features to their handwriting. Ergo, all we have to do is compare the handwriting and this letter to a sample of yours. And we will know soon enough who it was that sent this letter. I, 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 
I'll never write another thing in my life. Tsk, tsk, tsk. It's no use, Mr. Loving Knight. For you have already graciously provided me with a sample of your handwriting. The autograph. This autograph in our mysterious letter. If we compare the handwriting, we'll know that the answer to our question soon enough. <laughs> Confess now, Larry, to your mis to your miserable failure. I'm sorry. I I did it. It was me causing trouble again. I admit it. You hit the nail right on the head, Edgy. So he finally confesses. <clears throat> I saw the pink princess being carried around in the stretcher and got worried, all right? I wanted to go into Minnie's room, but the doctors wouldn't let me in. So what choice did I have? It was the chimney or bust, Edgy. The chimney or bust? Your, your mind jumped from the door to the chimney. What a criminally over what a criminally overactive imagination. Well, at least I was honest and wrote Mindy a letter and stuck it and stuck it under the door. That way, she wouldn't be so shocked when I came down through the chimney. Except for the fact that the letter was an utter failure at conveying said sentiment. I'm I'm really sorry, Larry. You, Larry, you may be a shameful, good-for-nothing blight on the face of humanity. However, I always knew you weren't the killer. I told you to trust me, and because at the very least. I can attest to what that about you. Edgy, your act. We've lost a lot of valuable time about you. Because of, about you? Because of you? Oh. In any case, I believe we can say that now we know exactly what happened. Mr. Larry Butts sought to climb down the chimney, not for access to the crime scene. But who enters the room of the elderly lady next door? Alright, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Give me like two seconds. Let me just let me see this. Hold on. Okay. This seems to be good. I think so. This might be good. Probably not. I think this is fine. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, no. <laughs> Go on, give me two more seconds. Okay. Better? I want to take a sip now. <clears throat> Great job, Mr. Prosecutor. Although, I still find it a bit unbelievable that the two of you are friends. But the suspicion on that guy over there isn't completely resolved yet, so don't get any funny ideas about running off, okay? Oh? Hey, what's... Edgy, what does that wolf man mean when he says I'm not off the hook yet? He means the murder weapon. Larry, did you forget? There are two layers of suspicion hanging over your head. That's exactly what I mean. We can't only rely on the words and the suspect after all. We may have figured out where he was and what he was doing all night, but the blood-stained samurai sword that was left at the crime scene, as long as there is no satisfactory explanation for that, this wolf will refuse to ease up on its bite. Eek. Edgy, that guy, he looks like he's seriously about to take a bite out of me. I'm well aware, and you should be as well, that this upcoming battle will be, excuse me, crucial. Thanks to the thanks to the cooperation of our lovely Blumber, I've been dealt a, I've been yeah, I've been dealt a very nice hand and a sweet trump card. Looks like we're about to enter the final bout. Now, Mr. Prosecutor, let's see what you've got. I can easily point out the contradiction in the supposed murder weapon, but the real problem for me is figuring out what the real murder weapon is. <clears throat> this will be a high stakes gamble. But this is one game I can't afford to lose. Ah, oh, shit, another one. Why, Larry? <clears throat> I was the one who found the body of the victim, the Mask 2. Besides him was a samurai sword glittering red and offering up the scent of blood. 
It was supposed to be in a steel samurai's dressing room, but I found it here instead. Plus, I found the murder weapon's owner. The suspect Larry Butts in here too. Isn't it a bit far-fetched to accuse someone simply on the basis of ownership? But this owner wanted to sneak onto the crime scene. I think that's plenty to go on, don't you? If you're alluding to his reason for being by the chimney, we have already established that. Hold on there, Mr. Prosecutor. You two are longtime friends, right? Who's to say you didn't fabricate the evidence to give him an alibi? You're accusing me of fabricating evidence? I put that behind me. <laughs> you think I can believe anything you produce? Forging evidence is all you prosecutors do. This man has some serious issues with prosecutors. But uh, come on, I don't, can't think of something as complicated as that, right Edgy? Larry, I can agree because I know you and your personality well. However, Agent Schlong knows nothing about you. Or me, for that matter. I sense this hatred for my entire profession emanating from his entire being. Meaning that the only way I can prove Larry's innocence is to present irrefutable evidence. Of course. Rebuta, why Larry? I'm gonna take another sip. Alright, we're two health down. That's good. <clears throat> so you were the first to discover the body this time. This time? What's that supposed to mean? You better watch what you say. I only said this time because earlier, Kay was the first to discover the body in Baba Hill. And your secretary, Agent Sheena, was ready to accuse her of the murder for that. Ha. Huh. So are you going to use that excuse to call me suspicious now? Of course not. I was simply pointing out the usual pattern which, with discoverers of bodies. But in the Bobbleys case, there was proof that she was holding the weapon, right? Well, in this one, it's a bit different since we know exactly where the weapon is. Besides having the steel summer, so glittering red in the offering of the sign of blood. <coughs> Excuse me, but glittering red and offering up the scent of blood? Do we have to spell it out for you? I mean the sight and the smell of blood, of course. And according to the test, the blood on the sword belongs to the victim. The sword was made only to be used on stage, so it's not sharp. But it is pretty weighty. It's certainly heavy enough to beat someone to death with. Which leads me to suspect that the victim was beaten to death with a sword. Beaten to death with a sword, huh? This last statement is too important to just let it slip by. Oh, let me look at the samurai sword again. The weapon that we use on stage is thought to be what killed the mask. Yeah, this was pretty dull. But it shouldn't be that heavy, right? It's hollow. So, sh so should this also be hollow. <clears throat> Besides him, it was still covered in the victim's blood. Okay, let me press this again. So the sword is covered in the victim's blood? Yeah, the lab results confirm that the blood in the sword matches the victim. But the sword is as dull as a vanilla envelope. It's just a stage prop after all. The steel samurai is all about safety first, so you can't use it like a real sword. The steel samurai has spoken. Stab stab. The pink princess also appears to have something she'd like to petition to you personally. What the pink princess would like to say can wait for the day for after eternity. Anyway, <clears throat> anyway, my point is that even though the sword is too dull to slice with, it's certainly heavy enough to bludgeon someone to death with. Therefore, I suspect you better be of that thing. How about this samurai sword? Have you received the report from forensics yet? They confirmed that the blood of the sword belongs to the victim. Alright, but have they confirmed that the outline of this wound is consistent with the weapon? Tell me something. Do you see that dead body right there in front of you? So if they were conducting an autopsy right now, shouldn't that body not be here? 
Well... Hmm, I suppose so. I guess they must still be investigating this room. Meaning that it's possible he doesn't know about that piece of evidence. Anything else you'd like to chit-chat about? No? Good. Now let's continue. It was supposed to be in the steel Simon's dressing room, but I found it here instead. Larry has already testified that he's forgotten the steel samurai, the samurai sword here. Uh, yeah, I was shaking hands with the ambassador in here, and I left it uh, behind by accident. So what? You lied earlier, so who's to say that this excuse isn't just another lie? Uh, but I forget stuff all the time, right, Edgy? Tell him. Why don't you tell him yourself? You see, what did I tell you earlier? No one will buy such a pathetically weak excuse. Yes, well, I know that it's not possible to prove such an excuse as truth. And yet you offer it up as a fact? You are a worse person than I originally thought. You're free to think what you like. However, I know that Larry is not the killer. Agent Schlong, please continue with your argument. I'll expose the flaw in it soon enough. Plus, I found the murder weapons owner, the suspect, Larry Butts in here too. All right, last one. I'm gonna take a sip right now. <clears throat> Just because he is the owner of the weapon, therefore he must be the killer, is it? No. Climbing all the way up to the chimney is plenty suspicious and suspicious in my book as well. Regarding that, I've already drawn the truth out, and the truth is one thing I don't bend. The only thing I bend is bad. <laughs> it doesn't matter if you bend backs. If it's you or whoever, your prosecutors are all the same. <laughs> I'm sorry. And as for me, prosecutors are the one thing I don't trust in. And an agent who doesn't trust prosecutors, what are you playing at? Sorry, sis, but there's only two things I trust. My subordinates and evidence at the crime scene. Agent Schlong hates prosecutors, but as long as he trusts evidence that has been left at the crime scene, then there is something I can show him that he can believe in. It's simply not possible that the samurai sword is the real murder weapon, so I should focus on proving that point to Agent Lang first. Okay. Well, let's save, because I'm scared. And, uh, cut. Uh, okay. I was the one who found the body of the victim, the mouse too, besides him, was covered in the victim's blood. Is that correct? Uh... The weapon that's used on stage is thought to be what killed the mask too. It's thought. Okay. Covered in the victim's blood. Okay, I think I'm supposed to present the sword because it's thought to be. I suspect he beat the victim to death with that thing. Excuse me. hollow okay yeah I don't know what to present here the spear or the sword uh, it's gonna be one of those technic technic technicality these things oh okay oh uh, excuse me where's the there it is so I'm a sword weapon that was used on stage thought to go to kill him Okay, well, let me just go back here then, I guess. Okay, oops. Damn it! Alright, covered in the victim's blood. I'm gonna go with the fact that it's, it's thought to be covered in the victim's blood. Alright, wrong. Love it, off to a good start. And that statement just now stands in contradiction to this piece of evidence. That thing has nothing to do with what I was saying. Now put it away. And your logic is so badly in need of repair that you might as well throw it out too. This is the real deal here. Your courtroom mannerisms are worthless at a crime scene. Girk, you dare insult the courts? Cover in the victim's blood. Okay. I don't think it's this sentence, so it's probably this. You beat the victim to death for that thing. So I'm gonna either gotta present the sword here or the prop spear. And I'm gonna go with this prop spear.
Mm, I'm I'm considering going back. I'm considering going back. <laughs> I'm considering to go back. Uh, no, we should be fine. Okay, <clears throat> I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine with this. So as long as only halfway. Do you know what it, this is, Agent Ling? <laughs> it's a long spear, right? We used to have those a lot in my country a long time ago. Here, see, mowing people down. Spears are the weapon of heroes throughout history. It's the next most effective weapon after there's a whip. I... I doubt that. I think the whip is a slightly different category. So what's your point? Are you going to tell me that the spear is the real weapon? No, I simply want you to take a look at the section here. The way it's bent. Precisely. That is... An example of how I bent people. <laughs> Sorry. Apparently, a certain troublemaker hit it against the wall in this embassy earlier. And as you can clearly see, the inside of the Steel Samurai's weapons are hollow. In other words, they're replicas that aren't strong enough to deliver a damaging blow, let alone the multiple strikes necessary to bludgeon someone to death. And yet, there's not even a dent in the Samurai's sword. How do you explain that? <clears throat> Aya! Oh yeah, the sword and the spear are made of the same stuff, so they bend easily. Uh, <clears throat> but I wish they make them out of better stuff, because the spear got bent. I wasn't able to do my special early summer rain job move. Man, I got such an earful from the director of, of the play for not being in, for not being, oh my gosh, for not being, for not doing it in the show. Jeez. The Steel Samurai special move was changed tonight because of him? Samurai Spear updated. Yeah, ouch. Look at the spear. Uh, because he bent it, Larry couldn't do the early summer rain jab special attack. Awesome. So glad we got that. <laughs> Jot it down. <clears throat> That's more than enough of your whiny whimpery. Now, back on the topic of the sphere. Yes, let's return to the real topic of discussion. This is where the real gamble begins. I don't have any real strategy per se. So all I can do for now is let the chips fall where they may. Using guesswork and taking risk in place of real logic is hardly the Von Karma way. It's neither smart nor very clever. Ms. Von Karma, as you know, unlike your father, I am not a genius prosecutor. Plus, I doubt his record of a 40-year winstery will ever be broken. What? What do you, what do you, what do you mean? But perhaps it is for the best if it remains unbroken. What? For no one should have conceived of the notion to convict all defendants in the first place. Objection! What a foolishly foolish statement from a foolish fool who hates to lose. It is the job of prosecutors to make sure that all defendants are found guilty in court. Francesca, I thought we move on for this. There is nothing more important in this world than a perfect victory. That may be your opinion, however, I don't believe that's all we are. Interesting, okay. I guess... I guess she will still think like that, right? I'm trying to think of her character in Trials and Tribulations. She was helping me as Phoenix and also going against me and as Edgeworth. So I can't even remember much of what she says. Hmm. I know it's that she was helpful. I mean that was something at least. Damn. Did she would still think like that? I'm trying to understand her character here. Hmm. I mean, that doesn't seem right to me, but I can't really remember any different, though. I guess she'll still be like that, huh? Huh. Okay. I I guess I'll I'll just let it slide for now. As a prosecutor, what I pursued is not the perfect victory, but the perfect truth. And if that means that the bridge on my cross will crumble beneath my feet, 
then let it crumble as I walk on towards the truth. Hell yeah. You're good at keeping me entertained, Mr. Prosecutor. But you know, humans are delicate creatures. The slightest bump and we expire. It's li I'd like you to consider, if you will, the possibility that the sword was used in such a way that the attack killed Damask too without bending it. So what do you think of my hypothetical scenario? Excuse me. <clears throat> I think you know what to do here, right? And what you need? Of course. What I need is evidence against Agent Schlong can't refute. This is it. It's time to bring this to a close. Our argument. Before we do that, though, I'm gonna... Cut? Uh, okay. I accidentally clicked A, so don't worry, this is, the, this is the first statement. Let me take a sip. Okay. <clears throat> it's possible to use a samurai sword to kill someone. And under these circumstances, that's the only logical conclusion. We searched the ambassador, top to bottom, but the victim's blood is only on that weapon. So isn't it only natural that suspicion will fall onto the owner of said weapon? Hmm. How long do you tend to cling on to that preposterous theory? As long as I want, because we examine every corner within the walls of this embassy. There's no stone we would we left unturned. You want to take a sip? Okay. <clears throat> and we have managed to come up with the only one con logical conclusion. That's the only place inside this ambassador with the victim's blood on it is... On it is this sword. You left no stern unturned. Is that a fact? If you got something to say, then say it in the only way I respect, Mr. Prosecutor. Yes, of course. In that case, allow me, allow me to make it all crystal clear for you. Oh, excuse me. Why Larry Part 2? It's possible to use a samurai sword to kill someone. <clears throat> Alright, hold on. Cut. Okay. <clears throat> My inquiry as to how you're able to make such a claim, Agent Lang. Long Zee says, capable of miracles beyond comprehension, uh, a mysterious creature is man. Rather than man, it's Agent Lang's quotes that are getting increasingly incompre <laughs> incomprehensible. The human body is a mysterious thing, even with a toy like sword. It's easy to kill a man if you hit just the right spot. Which is why I think it's possible to kill with this thing without... Uh, leaving a dent. But we can only be sure of one way or the other by seeing if the wound matches the sword. Huh, <laughs> I know that. But as long as it's a possibility, I can proclaim it as much as I like. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't think this is the only logical conclusion. But you must know that your conclusion is wrong. Given the circumstances I'm in, the only people uh, I can trust are my subordinates. <clears throat> because they are a much more trustworthy bunch than you prosecutors will ever be. And you call yourself a professional? Not so fast. Not so fast. <laughs> you still don't see it, do you, Mr. Prosecutor? You have to earn my trust. And the only way to do that is to show me proof of another possible murder weapon. Another possible weapon? In this room? There's only one other thing left. This is going to be a gamble, but I can't withdraw from the game now. You're not going to get me to trust you with by the power of your glare alone, you know. Plus, I have other reasons as to why I think the samurai sword is the murder weapon. Talking about the victim's bottom is only found the weapon. Oops, hold on. I just it's the only logical conclusion. It's possible to use a sword to kill someone. It's the only logic. Okay, I think I have to present it on this statement here. Uh, but let's uh, let's look at press the rest first. The only place where you could find blood was that was on the samurai sword. 
That's right, even with Luminol. Which means that there are no other possibilities outside what I've already outlined. Do I have a problem with Ancient Link's assertion that the Samurai Sword is the weapon? That's not... I want to press the other statements first. Hmm, perhaps I should wait and see how this plays out for a bit longer. Agent Schlong, if you could be so kind as to continue with your testimony... <laughs> so it's not only natural that suspicion will fall onto the owner of the said weapon. Alright, last one. And what if you were to find a different murder weapon? Will that clear Larry's name? Are you saying you can prove that possibility? Of course, and if you don't believe that I can, then I'll show you something to convince you. Evidence that you cannot refute. Ha 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 ha! Ah! Sounds like fun, Mr. Prosecutor. Alright then, go ahead and show me what you've got. I can prove to you the possibility that the murder weapon is something else, but I cannot do so on my own, on my strength alone. Miles Edgeworth, what are you running straight into a quagmire for? I thought you... I thought you said that you were busy in the pursuit of the perfect truth. And if that's the case, then show me this perfect truth if it exists at all. Don't worry. Thanks to you, I've already prepared myself to do just that. There's no need to thank me. I'm simply doing what any good superior would. Yeah, I suppose you are. Very well then. I will show you the possibility of a different murder weapon. Okay, I mean... Shit! Okay, uh, the second to last statement. One, two, to three. Is this one? Yeah, this one. Let's raise an objection. If you believe that there is no other door possibility left to open, then allow me to force one open for you. <laughs> And how do you plan to do that? By showing you what may possibly be the real murder weapon. Oh shit! Cut! Uh, okay. Ha 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 Ah! The real murder weapon? I hate to repeat myself, but many men have already searched every last inch of this embassy. And they concluded that nothing, nothing else could have been used as the weapon. Knowing these facts, do you still want to press forward with your little hypothesis? Of course, because it's not possible that your men inspected everything in their investigation. What are you talking about? I don't appreciate mind games, and I don't appreciate it when people like you slander my men. What do you mean by you people? <laughs> I'm not slandering them, I assure you. I'm merely pointing out that their investigative dra dragnet has a few holes in it. Namely, that there is something your men couldn't even lay a finger on, and that item is the real murder weapon. All right then. I'll play along for now. This real weapon that killed the mask too. What exactly is it? The real more murder weapon, which not a single person has yet to touch, is this. Um. Uh, okay. Letter from soccer, okay. Standard request, okay. Summary spear. No. The master notes. It's thought to be what killed him. Hash flowers. The vines are supported by stakes and are still growing. Bowed with still samurai. Could be the knives, right? The statue. Oh, that's right. The, the pictures are different. Yeah, this one looks like they have the coverings on here. Okay. Counterfeit bills, Bobby's ink, knife handle, paper, the statue. The knife. Describe a bit of Mitchell Coach's blood on the blade. 
Okay, that's not his blood. Okay, it's a knife with no blood on it. Uh, Samurai. Okay, I think it's gonna be the picture or the statue itself here. Take that. Shit! This is the weapon you're looking for. Long as he says, one should always perform one's job in the proper manner. And I can't see how it's proper to show me evidence so devoid of potential or relation. Ugh, was I mistaken? Ha, now then, Mr. Prosecutor, I'm gonna give you one more chance. But only one more, you got that? Because that's all the playtime I've got. Ugh, I must remain calm and think through this carefully. The real murder weapon that killed the mouse too is... It's gotta be that thing, I just know it. Okay, it's not the... It's not the picture. It's not what's in the picture, it's probably gonna be the statue. Well, not the statue, but... What is behind the statue? Take that. Hell yeah. I was right, kind of. The National Treasure of Alabast. You mean a Premi Duck statue? <clears throat> yes, and as you know, only the ambassador and secret uh, uh, secretariat may touch it. Which I believe means that neither you nor your men were able to examine it, correct? Ha 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 You know very well that if you we did that, there'd be an international incident. Between the Kingdom of Alibas and the Republic of Baba Hill. The two countries' precarious relationships teeters in the balance. Over a stupid fight related to a silver... Fuck. Forgot. Shit. A silver... The... Statue. Fuck. Sorry. But I'll be... <clears throat> but I'll be damned if I let something go unexamined. Agent Schlong, if you, please, if you could please take a look at this. Oh, why... Man, I... This game sucks. <laughs> this game sucks for not letting me use the statue the fucking picture. Uh, sorry, just the picture, not the statue. Whatever. The, uh, the direction the statue is facing just before and after the crime are different. And there's... Excuse me. And there's only one conclusion I can draw from that. Go look for Ambassador Alba and get him here to give us the okay to examine the statue. Shifu, you can't listen to the infidel's words. He is most definitely trying to trick you. Shifu, please let be, let's be rational about this. Grr. Longzi says, just go already. Yes, sir. Damn, he said that? This guy fucking wise as hell. Shifu! Yeah? I'm really sorry, sir, but I was unable to convince the ambassador. I was unable to obtain permission for us to examine the Primidex statue. <laughs> I see. Wait, back to Zen. The investigation is still at a standstill. Agent Schlung, I will go and speak with the ambassador personally. Save your breath. He may act all weak and frail, but that old man's one tough cookie. But I guess you gotta be tough when you're representing the whole country, you know? Agent Schlong. What do you want? Let's just hurry up and examine the statue already. What? But Seifu, what about causing an international incident? Quiet. I'll take the fall if I have to later. Agent Schlong, the hypothesis is mine, so if someone is to take the responsibility, let it be me. Responsibility? If you want to talk in such heavy terms, maybe I should let you. It'd be a real problem for my men if something were to happen to me. Alright then, let's talk in more investigation. Uh, blah. If you want to know the truth, we can't stop here. Action must be taken. Agent Lang, I'd like to run a luminal... What the fuck? Aluminal <laughs> Camiluminescence? Camiluminescence? Test on the statue. Aluminal test? Ah, good thinking. If the statue is the murder weapon, then some of the victim's blood should be on it. Okay, let's get the forensics team in here. Oh. Heh, <laughs> looks like you hit the jackpot, Mr. Prosecutor. I guess this means that this is the real weapon that killed the mask too. Indeed. 
But I wouldn't celebrate yet if I were you. This doesn't let your friend off the hook. It doesn't prove that he didn't kill the mask too, so the charge remains. Alright, hold on. I gotta blow my nose. Oh, cut. Uh, okay. <clears throat> we are hardly done examining the statue, Agent Lang. Sorry, Schlong. Knowing that this that it is the real weapon, I believe further examination is required. Ah, <sighs> you think so? Okay then, knock yourself out. Do 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 do. Sorry. So so the knees. With his sword drawn and ready, there is a certain aura of valor around him. Lugzi says, "Those who hold a sword on, wait, wait, those who hold a sword hold an equally strong will." It is said that the weapon one uh, holds reflects the strength and will of one character. Characters. Hmm, I wonder if this was created as a show of the country's majesty. Oh, then what about Franzi's whip says about her character? It says that I'm ready to exact punishment on those who would break the law. Why are you glaring at me like that? I thought you understand that I'm not the killer. Now I believe in your case, she wishes she wishes to exact punishment before anything else happens. Okay. Beats. There's a handprint below, okay. Before we do that, let's look at that back here. There's a shield on his back. I wonder if that is supposed to mean that his back is covered? Longzi says those with a shield on their back deflect all enemies behind them. It means that he is ready for any blindside attacks that may come his way. Agent Lang, there's no need to attach overly complex meanings to such a simple thing. Ha! You didn't seem to get Longzi any. Blech. You didn't seem to get Longzi saying, so I was just explaining it to you. The saying itself is what I was referring to when I said overly complex, you know. Okay, what about the head? Hmm, upon closer inspection, he really does look like a lot. He does look a lot like the Steel Samurai. Hey, maybe that's why they chose him to be the Goodwill Ambassador. I actually can't discredit that hypothesis. Or maybe the people at this embassy just really, really like the Steel Samurai. That's up. That's absolutely preposterous. I don't think it's that unlikely. We mustn't go around denouncing people's opinions. And yet, look at how easily you discredit mine. Not that I care why they choose him. Okay. Come on. How do I... Okay, there are. There we go. What is this? Ugh. Oh, and what do we have here? This dirty smudge. It looks like a handprint. Oh, that was Lane. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> What's a definitive bit of evidence like you doing over under here? Looks like we have some fingerprints to anal analyze. Gurk. Worst case scenario, these prints belong to Larry, but it looks like it's too late for me to do anything about that for now. Hey, forensics guy! I want results on these fingerprints ASAP, you hear me? Oh, I forgot to take the battle with Slee here. He just died. he has nothing to say. Okay. I get that. It'd be like that sometimes. Agent Lang, I have the analysis results, sir. Good, and... Sir, about the prince we lifted from the bottom of the statue. Well, um, you know the victim of the murder is... Is in the Babylese embassy? The prince belonged to him, to Mr. Manny Cochin, sir. But that's... What's going on around here? No, that's impossible. Each Primiduck statue can only be handled by someone of that country. But... By the very fact that Mr. Cochin's fingerprints are on this one, it leads me to the only conclusion. The statue is actually Baba Hill's, Baba Hill's Primi Duck statue. Impossible. Yeah. Impossible. It can't be. Ayah! Nice. Larry never once set foot on the Baba Hill soil, so he was free to go. However, this new piece of information only served to confuse us even further. 
The ringleader of her smuggling operation was killed with an Alba, an Ali Bastion knife in Baba Hill. And the mass too was killed by on Al Bastion soil with Baba Hill's national treasure. Excuse me, sorry. <clears throat> Interesting. And the mysterious of the great thief Yana, who's visited both countries. She probably kill them both, maybe. Pieces were there, but I had yet to see the big picture where they were they were to form. To be continued. And we're going to continue it now. Do -do 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 -do. Can I take a sip? Okay, uh, March 14th, 9.21 p.m. Open air stage. I left the Mask 2 investigation uh, to Francisca and returned to Baba Hill. Interesting. Okay. Wait, I gotta do another cut. Cut. Alright. Um, let's see. Uh, I left the Mask 2 investigation to Francisca. And return to Bob Hill. Lots of twos here. <clears throat> I suppose my first order of business should be to look into Bob Hill's statue. Mr. Edgeworth! Sorry, excuse me. Okay. <clears throat> so, Kay, what's the situation? Oh, it's great! Investigating is so much fun! In other words, it must have made absolutely no progress. Uh, we, uh, we, uh, weren't good enough, honest, sir. Damn, hold on. We've, uh, been, uh, investigating our, uh, hearts out, sir. Very well, then. Well, would you care to give me an update on your investigation? Um, oh, uh, we had a really fun time, sir. I knew it. Zero progress. In any case, Detective Gumshoe... Uh, yes, sir. You have, per you, ha uh, you have permission to enter the Albastian Embassy, is that correct? Yep. As a local detective, I'm helping out with investigations on both sides, sir. Good. In that case, I can leave these pieces of evidence with you. They belong to the lady under the Pink Princess's mask. The Pink Princess? What kind of lady were, was was playing her, sir? The kind that was also playing the role of the pink badger yesterday. Oh! Oh, uh, understood, sir. If I happen to run into her, I'll give them back to her as promised. And if I don't... <coughs> then I guess I'll unload them somewhere. He doesn't seem that enthused to go find her, but I can't blame him. Evidence that has lost their value given to Detective Gumshoe. Now then, I don't believe I'd be needing this anymore either. What? Are you really going to throw that autograph away? Yes, because that Steel Samurai was a fake. Steel Samurai's autograph scrunched up into a ball and disposed of. Alright, Edgeworth. Could have at least sold it. Wait, what? What do you mean by fake? Now then, I believe it's time for the a little housekeeping. Unnecessary evidence has been removed. Remaining evidence has been rearranged. Oh, nice that they update on that. Update on that. All right, but uh, I need a blow nail, so cut. Okay. Um, let me see here. The note, the body, the knives moved up. All right. Um. Knife handle, sing ink. The dog's still here. Okay. All right then. Okay, Kay's not following me. Okay, let's uh, ex uh, let's examine this here. Hey, do you detect the scent of treasure coming from this bush? The scent of treasure? Not at all. No, Mr. Edgeworth, you're totally not with it. I'm not with it? 
No, and it's important for both thieves and prosecutors to be energetic. Perhaps we're a thief like you, but that level of energy is unbecoming of a prosecutor. You really think so? That prosecutor we met at Gatewater Land seemed to be pretty active. Well, he's not a prosecutor anymore. See, see how everything just naturally balances out? Okay. Now, right, hold on, I gotta do it again. Okay. Um. Okay. Now, about this. Okay, another. Alright, uh, looks like a little ladder here, so are we gonna have a little ladder joke here? Inserted? Hmm, a ladder. Actually, that's a step ladder. They're the exact same thing. No way! From their structure up, they're totally different. But of course, from a thief's perspe uh, perspective, the best kind of ladder is the rope ladder. A step ladder is too much. It's too. It, yeah, it's much too heavy to carry around, after all. And from a prosecutor's perspective, any type of ladder is guilty of being dangerous during an earthquake. Awesome. Always gotta have those jokes in. Me. Bags full of cement powder are stacked up here. I suppose they're here for the renovation. Yeah, because I don't smell a drop of gold here, or any other treasure for that matter. Okay, the only scent you should detect in a place like this is the smell of sweat. Hey, uh, Mr. Edgeworth, that was a pretty good play on words there. Ah! Ah! Gummy! Don't randomly jump into one of our dialogues like that! Were you eavesdropping on us, Detective Gumshoe? No. <laughs> uh, no, it's uh, not like that, sir. Uh huh. Okay, then let's see what's uh, back here. It would appear that the stage is also scheduled to be renovated. You know, I would love to perform on a stage like this. Something like the Greatness Great Thief Show. Oh, the Greatest Great Thief Show. I should think it would be a bad idea for a thief to show their face to the world. Cones. So how come so many traffic cones are red and white? That's because they're highly visible from great distances. Oh, is that why? So then, the reason you wear that wine red suit is for visibility's sake? Please don't compare me to a ragged plastic traffic cone. I don't know, she kind of got you there. Hey, you're not going back to Alabast Alabast already, are you? No, not yet. I still need to gather a bit more information first. Alright, got it. Gumshoe! Uh, Mr. Edgeworth, sir. You look like you're enjoying yourself, Detective. Well, I don't have much else uh, that I enjoy as much as a good investigation, sir. So, what did you find out? Ah, uh, well, uh, ha ha ha. Ha ha ha. I take it that he has found nothing of any particular use as usual. Investigation update. Hey, Mr. Edgeworth. Wait, hold on. <coughs> hey, Mr. Edgeworth. I got something really interesting from Ambassador Ballolino. Oh, and what is this something interesting? This, sir. A lamp. Wow, that's so pretty. I'm so jealous. That's a real rare treasure there. Why does the flame burn green, Detective? So apparently if you burn the special white crystal oil that they only make in Baba Hill, it burns this green color, sir. Interesting. So, so, so it's a special property of the oil. I suppose this is a ploy to force people to visit Baba Hill should the oil run out. Hey, Gummy! What about these silhouettes? They stuck some cutouts on the outside of the lantern so it project the images. Oh? Silhouettes, huh? They are rather pretty, aren't they? Wait, what am I doing? I was supposed to be asking for an update on the investigation. Hey, uh, what's wrong, sir? There's something I want you to investigate for me. Do you think you can do it that much? Uh-huh. You got it, sir. Hey, that's not fair. Why does Gummy get to do all the fun stuff? Oh, uh, well, that's because I'm Mr. Edgeworth's partner. Ah, I can't believe you took advantage of the confusion and stole my role as assistant. I expect the two of you to get along and work together like professionals on this. Silhouette Lantern, jot it down. Take a look at this. Silhouette Lantern runs on white crystal oil, which burns green. It's a Babahi souvenir. Now let's present the uh, lantern to him. That's a souvenir from Baba Hill. It's a silhouette lantern. 
By the by, how much is it? It was really expensive, sir. About as expensive as my coat. Oh, I see. So it's about the average price of a cheap souvenir. Ouch, sir. Okay, well, do you want some dogs? Detective? Wow, those look really good, sir. Can I have one? Don't you dare line your stomach with the evidence. Come to think of it. The dog detective Gumshoe takes care of uh, just up and ate a semi-dog earlier as well. Poor little dog, slowly coming to resemble his handler. A spear. What do you notice about this piece of evidence, detective? Um, well, uh, I don't really sense anything special about it. But the embassy is a different story. Oh, I see. I'm not really sensing anything special from you either, sir. Well, I'm sensing a special look at your monthly salary, detective. Got fucked. <laughs> Okay. Um, the flowers. Okay. Statue? I think Detective Gumshoe has anything really to say here. You would think you have something to say about the money, but no, apparently not. Okay. Guys, useless. Nah, uh, I'm just gonna present the badge and that's it. Hey, is that? Hey, it's your prosecutor's badge. That thing's really important, right? So what would happen if you lost it, sir? Why are you asking me such an ominous question? Well, because I've lost my police badge before, sir. Uh, I just want to tell you to be careful, sir. Because ready the expedition. All right, yeah, I already read this. I wish someone needs to take his own advice a bit more. Okay, we're done talking to you. Now, uh, let's look at the sign here. There's a sign here warning passerbys to take precautions around their renovation site. They're really going all out, huh? There's a construction going on everywhere. <clears throat> I believe Ambassador Paolino said it was to attract more tourists and visitors. Um, but what can they do with the new stuff they're building? Hey, what do you think they should do, Miss Edgeworth? How about transforming it into a courthouse? Hey, be serious. But I was being serious. Okay, let's look at the scaffold in here. Just looking at these scaffolds makes me want to climb them. I recommend that you do that you do not try. There was a fire burning here until not too long ago. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, but I think enough time has passed, so it should be all right. Thief, ch thief child says. If there is a height to be scaled, then you must, then scale it. You must. Starting from Thief Child, would you care to explain what you just said? Okay, let's talk to Palomino. Palomino. Uh, maybe. Can I enter in here? They're having a real time of. They're having a real time of it clean. Oh, that's okay. They're having a real time of, of it cleaning up after the fire. Hmm. I suppose we should stay out of there and investigate the stage more- some more- yeah, some more then. Okay, so I think we have to talk to Paulina then. So let's talk to Kay first. Yes? Investigation update. How is the investigation going in the Bobble Hughes Secretariat's office, Kay? Hmm... Well, even though we found a few treasures, they all have been pretty much burnt to a crisp. A treasure is a terrible thing to waste. Anyway, is there anything else I should know about? Um, oh, that's right. You know what I found in that office? A wooden bear carving. It was so cute. Can I have it? Huh? Can I? No, of course you can't. By the sound of things, it appears that there has been no progress in the investigation. Eh, of course. Take a look at this lantern. Okay, about this piece of evidence. Huh? May I really have it? Hmm, but you know, as a Yara, it'd be bad if I couldn't get this by myself. Sorry, but I have no intention of giving you this piece of evidence. Oh, really? I guess I misunderstood. I feel like I had a very similar conversation with someone else before. Uh, I can't remember what that reference to. The Samurai Dogs. It's a box of Samurai Dogs, right? Ah, but see, I'm a Jammin' Ninja fan. So while I would love to have, uh, to have one, I'm going to be strong and resist the urge. 
Well then, how about we slowly enjoy them after we crack this case? Okay, fine. You twisted my arm. Let's indulge. Oh, cute. Spear. Alright, the uh, note. You think you have something about the... You will say something about the thief's notes here. Bastion flowers, okay. Okay, sorry, 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 sorry. Okay, um... <laughs> okay, about this piece of evidence. Oh, that's right, okay. My bad, my bad, I was reading that text. Okay, uh, counterfeit bills, do 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 Bobble He's Ink. Those are the counterfeit bills. So I guess these counterfeits were made of the Bobble He's Ink. Come to think of it, I remember hearing on the news the other day that the Republic of Zing Fa, where the bills are coming from, is in an economic state. Mess. It's common knowledge that money rules the hearts of men. And when that money turns out to be fake, all encompassing confusion is a result. Ha! Huh, and that's when the Yada makes her stand. I'm gonna use my iron fist of justice on each and every counterfeiter. You'll see. I appreciate your sense of justice. However, I would appreciate it if you wouldn't go running running into the heart of any more raging fires. <sighs> yes, Mr. Edgeworth, I'll try. Okay. I think we're good here. I just talked to, uh... What was his name? Pauline? 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 Okay, um, his voice, his voice, his voice. Um, let me take a sip. Okay. <clears throat> ah, so you're back now, are you, Mr. Edgeworth? You must be tired. Here, with these, you can eat whatever you like. And these are... Discount tickets for a cafeteria. They open tomorrow at 10 in the morning. I appreciate the concern, however. These coupons do nothing for me right now. Open air stage. This open air stage, what function does it serve exactly? Well, normally we use it for a variety of events. It's all to attract that extra bit of attention to Baba Hill. I heard that tonight, over in the Albastian Rose Garden, Ambassador Alba was, going, was to give a speech. And you know what? Many told me that I really should give a speech too. Mr. Cochin- yeah. Mr. Cochin told you that? Yes, he did. Which is why I thought I should give a speech of my own. But unfortunately, I wasn't able to. Because of the fire that Yana started. Exactly. The Premi Duck Statue. Ambassador Paulino, I'd like to ask you a little more about the Premi Duck Statues. Oh, I see. Well, let me ask you this. Did you know that Alabast and Baba Hill used to be one country called Kodobia? Yes, I know that much... Excuse me. I know that much about your history. Well, the Primiduck statue belongs to the founders of Kodobia. At least, that's how the story goes. It was bequeathed onto the king of the Kodobia as a symbol of the country's wealth. So it was meant as a symbol of so sovereignty? Sovereignty? Fuck. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. And the right to rule, I take it. Yes, that's right. Which is why both countries are so adamant about their claim. <clears throat> we hold the real statue, therefore we hold the right to rule, is the reasoning. It's pretty petty when you think about it, though, I suppose. But if Alabas and Baba Hill were to re-establish relations, shouldn't that put an end to the squabbling over the statue? I have no reason to believe so. The Primiduck statue is even more important now as a key to diplomacy. I wonder if Ambassador Paulino knows about what has happened to the very important key to diplomacy. Perhaps I should try showing him this key and see what he has to say about it. Uh, let's look at Manny Coach first. 
Ambassador Paulino, there's just one thing I'd like to ask you about. Yes, and don't worry, you can ask me more than just one thing. How about two or three? In exchange, I'll expect you be coming to Papa Hill, yes? Uh, thank you, but just one thing is all I require. Manny Cochin. I'd like to ask you about this man who was your secretary. Ch uh, sure, uh, I'll tell you what I know. Thank you for your cooperation, Ambassador. He was, well, if I had to put it in one word, he was an able man. If there was ever anything I needed as an ambassador, he was able to get it for me. To think that a man like that had a hand in a smuggling ring right under my nose, going completely unnoticed. Actually, I suppose because he was an able man, I was unable to detect his dirty dealings. Hmm, it sounds like Mr. Cochin had a very sharp mind. Recently, Manny has been really busy. Since I became the Balbahi's representative at the Country Unification Council, he's been working tirelessly to cover my work for me. I'm s <clears throat> I'm sorry, but what is this about Country Unification Council? Oh, well, you see, had tonight events proceeded without a hitch, our two countries were to reunify and become one again. But I guess with how things turned out, that dream won't be realized anytime soon. Hmm, I suppose not. Quite unfortunate. <laughs> okay, uh, the statue, right? Bobble he's sat down. Only the bow, yep. Should be this one. Bloodstain weapon used to kill the mask. Originally from Bobby Hill's Secretariat's office. <laughs> Present it. <clears throat> Ambassador Apollino. If you could please take a look at this for me. The Premier Dutch statue sitting in Alabaster right now actually belongs to Baba Hill. So, it would appear. I received a call from Miss Von Karma about this earlier. Then you will understand why I wish to inspect Baba Hill's Premier Dutch statue immediately. Because the statue currently in your country's possession. Yes, well, I've already inspected it myself. And it is definitely Alabaster statue. I know, because it's the real statue. Then you're saying that Baba, he Baba Hills was a replica? <clears throat> I'm embarrassed to say it's true, even though I knew that someday it would be exposed. Okay. Hold on. Uh, Ambassador of Baba Hill. Okay. Alabas Premium Deck statue. So that's a real one, then. Alright. I'm embarrassed to say it's true, even though I knew that some- Oh, I read this. I received my orders from the leaders of Baba Hill, and I was to re- uh, negotiate with Ambassador Alba at this event. Uh, I was to negotiate with him and fix the results of the evaluations tonight. To say that he could not determine which statue was the real one. Why are you telling me this? Well, because you already figured it out. Our statue is just a hollow gold shell. Even if Baba Hill were to lose face, the reunification of the country is what's important. I'm right in thinking that, aren't I? I'm not making a mistake, right? If you don't know yourself, then I won't pretend to know either. I never thought that by being betrayed by my own secretary, the real symbol of wealth would be given to me. Isn't it simply ironic? Hey, where are you going? Are you heading back to Alba East? <coughs> Yes, before I do, I suppose I should give you a summary of what has happened. Recap, recap. Oh, I see. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, great recap, Edgeworth. I'm so glad. I'm caught up now. So there's been a murder in both countries using an object from the other country? Okay. That's the gist of it. Bobby Hill is just as strict as Alabast and their inspection of the people and things that enter their country, meaning that somehow both murder weapons were smuggled into two countries. That's the only logical conclusion that can be drawn. Perhaps the key to the weapon smuggling is the person who traversed both countries. You mean the fake Yada? In one way or another, the Yada is connected. Of this, I am sure. Now then, where was the Yada first spotted? Alright, where are we at? We're over two hours then, okay. Yeah, I'm gonna have to end soon, but let me see if I can find a spot. I, be <clears throat> I believe it was the Rose Garden of the Albastian side of the Embassy. The garden is just on the other side of this boundary. 
It's where Ambassador Alba was to give a speech tonight. At least that's where I've heard the Yada had appeared. In that case, I believe it's vital that I investigate the Rose Garden post haste. Wait, before you go, take a look at this, Mr. Edgeworth. What is that, a guitar pick? What is that? My guess is that it's a guitar pick. Oh, okay. <laughs> Alright. I'm fucking, fucking smart. I picked it up just uh, now over there. Do you think it will be any, any use? There's a little water on it, but how did the water get on it? It doesn't look like there's anything it could get wet from around here. I was thinking they have concerts here at the open air stage from time to time, right? Alright, I'll find its owner later. Pick. Oh yeah, there's one more thing. Let me take a look at the pick. Found at the open air stage. It looks like a, a guitar pick. It's also wet for some reason. Damn, wet ass guitar. Miss Edgeworth, would you be willing to hold on to this? What is this? It's a misused perfume. It's the bottle that woman left behind and that I found seven years ago. I thought that one day I'd be of some use in tracking her down. So I kept it safe all this time. <laughs> Thank you. I'd be honored to hold on to it for you. Misused perfume. Alright, this was left behind by Callisto Yu se oops, seven years ago. K has been safeguarding it. Okay, so where are we supposed to go to? Oh, we're supposed to go down. Yeah, they clean up there. Okay. Guitar pick. Alright, let me talk to K. Let's give us anything else to say. Alright, let's present the pick back to her. Okay, there you go. It'll make sense. Okay, what about the perfume? This is one of Miss Yu's uh, possessions that I found seven years ago. I thought that maybe it'd be of some use uh, one day, so I took really good care of it. Thank you, Kay. I'll be sure to put it to good use. You'll, s you'll see. Yeah, now let's go catch that woman. We will. However, Kay, you need to look before you leap. You tend to lose your cool when it comes to anything related to that woman. I'll be alright. I'm not exactly all. I'm not exactly all that calm normally, anyway. I don't think that's something most people boast about, Kay. Okay, let's present this to Paulino. Do you think about this? Uh, oh, let's present the the lantern. Baba, he's in canist consist mostly of white crystal oil. When lit, the oil and the ink burns a bright yellow green. It makes for a great science experiment. Here. Give it a try with this. Yes, well, I understand your enthusiasm, but the amount you gave me earlier is enough. I see. That's too bad. In that case, why don't you have a few more of these coupons? Excuse me. I've got plenty. I have plenty of those too. Where is he conjuring the, those from? <clears throat> okay. What are the dongs? Ambassador Paladino, I was wondering if you might have some thoughts on this. I think that you would know more about the case than I. So let me make it up to you for not knowing anything about that with these coupons. Thank you. However, I feel I must decline. Alright. Uh, the pick. Got it. The perfume. Got it. Now let's go talk to Gumshoe about this. Gumshoe! What do you know about the... Pick. Got it. Perfume. Alright, let's go to the next area then. So, we're supposed to go to the area. Let me talk to this guy first. <clears throat> Welcome back, Mr. Edgeworth. Please accept these courtesies of M Ambassador Paladino. <laughs> Fucking coupons. Uh, that's alright. I appreciate the sentiment. However, I must decline. Oh, come on. You might as well take them since he was nice enough to offer. Thank you, and I hope you'll visit our ambassador cafeteria to redeem them. It appears that Ambassador Paulino isn't the only one ad adamantly handing these out. I already examined these things, so... Babuhi's embassy is just outside the window. It appears our invitation are going well. 
Hey, I see Ambassador Paulino out there. He's carrying wood planks for the renovations himself? Very commendable. One, two, three, four. He's carrying four of them? Wow. It may not look like it, but I guess Ambassador Paulino has got some real muscle. Perhaps a bit of physical strength is required to be the ambassador of a country. So commendable. Let's look at the flags. It's the national flag of Baba Hill, and it features the country's butterfly crest. Using a butterfly as a national symbol makes Baba Hill just seem so cute. It goes along perfectly with Ambassador Paulino's smiley face. And what about the flowers of the alabast? Well, by the looks of Ambassador Alba, it almost seems like the poor flower needs to be watered. I suppose an ambassador is the face of a country, but Kay is being too literal about it. These flowers were sent by Global Studios. Global Studios? That's where they filmed the Still Samurai television show. They have been producing hit after hit recently, so this has been remodeled. I read about the papers over there. That mask out there is also getting a facelift too, right? Wasn't it? Okay, yeah, I read this one. Okay, I shouldn't read everything else again. Uh, let's just look at this then. There's a flat panel of VCR and a restaurant on the table. Aren't they worried that if they leave the tapes out on the table like that, the Yada will make off with them? I honestly doubt that Yana will want to steal these Samurai Steel Samurai Sword. But that's where you were wrong. The fake Yana may not want to steal it. But you never know the real with the you real Yana. Please stop eyeing the tapes with that look you want in your eyes, Kay. I like her jab animations. It's cool. Cool. Is it up here? You saw the show just beyond these doors, but it's been quite a number of hours now. Miss Edgeworth, have I ever told you that you talk like an old foggy? I was merely reminiscent. Is that such a crime? Okay, so look at the pamphlets again. I can't. Those are some nice flowers. I wonder who they're from. Gatewater Imperial Hotel? Where's this, Mr. Edgeworth? Uh, it's an ultra luxurious hotel that sponsors the Steel Samurai series. I've been there once uh, to investigate a case. No, I've been there once to investigate a case. Oh? So what kind of case was it? I believe it was related to the Nickel Samurai and the Jamming Ninja. Oh, I remember reading about that. You must be the head of the Steel Samurai Affairs down at the prosecutor's office, huh? I should think that even you can figure out such an office does not exist, okay? Okay, and look at this outside. I can see the courtyard in the Albastian Embassy through this window. It's a really stately and pretty embassy, isn't it? Especially that chimney. Just looking at it makes me want to use it to sneak my way in. Kind of like how Santa does it. Hey, are you alright? What's wrong, Mr. Edgeworth? I'm beginning to think that you may have what it takes to become a royal troublemaker. Alright, the flags. It's the national flag of Alabast, and it features the country's flower crest. Comparing the knife to the crest, it's apparent the knife was extremely well crafted. Yes. Yeah, every detail of the flower is there on the knife handle flower. In my professional opinion, the knife is worth quite a bit of money. Okay, that's a very valuable piece of evidence. I know that. You're gonna have to use this to find and steal the truth, right? I suppose you could put it that way. Now then, let's continue investigating. I'll think I'll be returning to the investigate. I think I'll be returning to the investigation in Alabast now, but I know, I know. I'll go back to Baba Hill and do some more investigating there. March 14, 9:58 p.m. Rose Garden, and that's where I'll leave it off. Oof, oof. All right. Quite a bit of progress today. Now, where did that put us at the end there? Uh, the middle part two. Awesome. Part two. All right, then. Um, I don't really have much to say right now, so I'll just, yeah. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time where we investigate the garden. And then we're going to catch the Yada hiding in the bush or something. I don't know. Something like that. Alright. Bye.